Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Streaming Ones, our live developer live stream series. We've got an awesome show lined up for you today. We're going to be previewing the upcoming issue number 14 and having an awesome giveaway of bonus points and a collector's edition of issue 14, so stay tuned. Yeah. Hey everybody, how's it going? Hello. Hello. I'm Andy Bendit, and I'm your community manager. Uh, and I'm Nick Miller, I'm the art director here at Funcom. New to the stream, first time? Yeah, yep. first time on camera, congratulations. Scared? Yeah, <laughs> no, no, scared at all. <laughs> he is scared. I'm nervous. He's scared. <laughs> My palms are sweating. Oh no, you'll be fine. It's <laughs> going to be your, your, your hazing into, the, into the, the wonderful world of streaming. Um, hello everyone, I'm uh, Romain Miel, I'm the um, uh, game director on uh, Secret Worlds. And then today we're going to be talking about issue 14. I've been teasing you about it for uh, quite some time now and uh, no more teases or maybe more teases today. Um, but we'll talk a bit more about what issue 14 is going to be about, where it's going to take place. Um, when it's gonna come out, maybe? Tons of things. And let's go straight into it. Um, I have a wonderful slideshow ready again uh, for this, and then we'll just go straight into this. And it's gonna help me remember what I'm supposed to talk about as well. So here goes. Issue 14. So we're gonna start with the location, finally. Um, it's going to make it a lot easier for them to talk a little bit about what the story is about and then we'll actually talk about the new features that are going to come with issue 14. Um, and I'm just going to dive straight into the location. Um, Ooh, so it where could it be? So as we mentioned before, like you know, we are revisiting a place that you guys uh, have seen before. But there's uh, more story to tell there so we wanted to, um, to get a chance to, uh, to reuse that and to get like a very... Um, a uh, cool issue, like something that felt like a lot uh, really full and had a, 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 a much more of a, of a story. Uh, and I think I've waited long enough, so here goes. And the new place is. Bobel! Transylvania! Ooh, no, nope. where is that? <laughs> Wrong side. Oh man! <laughs> um, Egypt! Um, so yeah, we're gonna go back to Egypt to get to uh, the warm side of the uh, of the of the secret world. Um, why Egypt? Um, because mostly I kind of felt like there was a lot of um, uh, things that we could have done that we never did, and it kind of bothered me. So I really wanted to make an issue which was about uh, looking at the creepy things of uh, that go in Egypt. Like you know, you have the whole nice. Um, sunny valleys and, and, and sandy deserted area of, uh, of Egypt but there's also all like the really the proper creep factor we could have with you know how scary mummies can be and how scary it could be to start going underground and all those things so the um, the issue is going to focus on, on, on this type of uh, this type of Egypt you're going to obviously start on the surface but eventually you're going to start dwelling into the uh, the darker corner of the uh, of both the Scorch Desert and City of the Sun God. And I hope it's going to be cool. Um, I actually have some screenshot of uh, some of the things in City of the Sun God. City of the Sun God, you know, um, I know it's not everybody's favorite play field. I know it's definitely not mine. Um, there's some issue in the layout. It can be fairly difficult to travel and everything. So actually we uh, improved uh, a little bit City of the Sun God. Uh, in some areas, we've created new path and everything. Um, also, the uh, anima jumps now actually does anima leap. Sorry, it does uh, make it a lot easier to travel anyway. Uh, but we try to make sure everything, like you know, all the areas you're gonna um, visit as part of the story, are gonna be a bit easier to access. Um, and um, because of the story, and we'll go through this a little bit later. Um, new areas have been uh, have been created in the playfield, and each of them telling their own little stories. I have a few screenshots, uh, turn away if you uh, don't want any spoilers. Um, I try to make sure there's no too big, like, you know, of course, uh, no big spoilers as part of a, uh, as part of the stream, so you should not worry too much. I'll, I'll warn you if there's anything special. But some of the areas, we can see something which involves at least the cultists and them being uh, probably up to no good. 
as we said, like, you know, a lot of um, cavernous areas and stuff like this, you can see a little bit of uh, involvement of some black stuff. I'm not quite sure what it is, but I've been told it's interesting. Um, mm. This is it for City of the Sun God. Um, we actually also have two new uh, instances as part of this um, as part of this issue. Um, I'm only going to talk about the first one because I really, really don't want don't want to go into the the spoilers. But the very first um, of those two new location is the, it's probably one of the creepiest area we have in uh, in the game right now. I think it's gonna it's gonna kick the um, Tyler Freeboard mission's ass. Uh, it's uh, it's very cool, and I have like a, a few uh, screenshots in game to show you kind of what we're talking about. Hopefully, it's not going to be too dark um, on your screens, um, but it's really something. So this is the areas you're going to start looking into. Um, very very moody. Um, you're going to be exploring those areas with uh, a torch to defend yourself. Um, and then finding something, but see for me that was like the part. This is why I imagine if I was, you know, thrown in Egypt somewhere, I probably would find myself into one of his spots and then um, get scared probably. Um, but I wanted to try and experience this in the game first before I, I move there and, uh, and find myself uh, entombed somewhere. You envision yourself as a tomb raider? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> but I'd, I'd, I'd like to. Th I'd like to think I could be. But no, I'd probably die on a before I even find the tomb. You're not a you're not a pro spelunker, alas. I've n no, I've done actually a lot of um, cave um, cave diving a lot. Yeah, diving, but like with uh, like oh, I'm I'm, oh. I'm like originally from the from the Pyrenees in France, and we have a lot of uh, grottoes and caves. And uh, I've been doing all that stuff like when I was a kid, going into uh, caves without telling our parents, with my cousins, and finding ourselves in the middle of a. Uh, poking at bats, you know, where like, you know, on the roof we would just, like when we're crawling through things and then we would, you know, as we were kids, like, use a torchlight on top of them and try to wake them up yeah, and then yeah. they wouldn't, like, surprisingly, we were like, oh, are we gonna, and then when you least expect it, one of them wakes up and everything starts flying in your face and it's, it's creepy and then you, you take your helmet off and you see nothing, like, it's like pure, like darkness with no what, that's light of sun. We're looking at right now. <laughs> yeah, with even so no light at all, and it's it's an amazing feeling. But yeah, it's I, I like those things. So there you go. Um, using my power as game director to force this kind of uh, <laughs> stuff on the game. <laughs> well, now we're just envisioning you in a Lara Croft outfit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, that's, <laughs> that's why I wear at home yeah. usually. It's my it's my Sunday uh, <laughs> Sunday outfit. Your Sunday best. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's when I walk the dog in my, uh, I I have a ponytail and everything is great. Awesome. Did you want to tell us a bit more actually about the mood, like creating the mood, Mr. Art Director? Uh, yeah, I think one of the keywords for this was claustrophobic, right? Yeah. Um, and, and that's something, that, that's a great word to, to go off of. And um, I think that f you can really convey that feeling when you can't see really what's beyond. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the whole entire space feels a lot smaller when you're using a lot of darks. Uh, yeah, and, and the whole air of, of mystery, what's going to be crawling out of the darkness. And um, and things and, will be crawling out of the darkness. Yeah. Of course, it wouldn't be TSW otherwise. It's almost the point of the game. Yeah, <laughs> you'd think it is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, I think, even if you're not afraid of confined spaces, I think everyone would be terrified being being trapped, being being trapped in an area that, uh, that's... Uh, no wider than your shoulders. And yeah. Slowly squeezing you in. No, I think it's, it's cool. There's a lot of uh, yeah. yeah, a lot of events and a lot of stuff we want to do. And I'm kicking the computer. Obviously, we're still online. Um, we're good. Good. No, I'm, I'm excited about this. And it's uh, so yeah. There's a big part. We're gonna go into the story a little bit in in detail later. But this is uh, this is just one of the mission uh, with all these things. But it's um, it's awesome. I'm really excited uh, in how it's turning out and. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be one of the one of the cooler issues yet. So, um, what else? As I mentioned, so we have actually another location that we have in there, which is uh, actually used for a pretty epic um, boss fight. Um, but it would be way too spoilery to show anything. Um, so hopefully, like after the issue is live and we'll play through it, we'll be able to um, uh, to show you what we're talking about and to explain a bit more of the thought process developing it. 
uh, but really like it, it really looks awesome and I'm having a really really hard time not <laughs> showing it because I really want to show it because I'm really proud of it yeah we've done a lot of things that we haven't done before mm. in this one uh, multiple things in one in one area that we've have, we haven't done before and our, our artist Josh has done a really good job at uh, bringing the whole feeling to life for sure it was uh, like we know like issue 13 was really an issue that uh, uh, we had time constraints, you know, everything had to be uh, released when it was, and it kind of, uh, uh, you know, it's a great issue. It's, you know, what I want it to be from, from what it was, but with issue 14, we want to take our time a little bit more, go back and revisit things as well, like, you know, go back and being fully inspired by, you know, moving out of, of Tokyo. It's always excited as well on our end to go back and do things we've been wanting to do for years. Um, and we have... Yeah, it's, I don't know. It, it was great. It was really good for, for the team. I think internally, everybody really uh, is, is enjoying this issue a lot. And we're really looking forward to, uh, to getting it out. Um, but before we do that, let's talk a little bit about what the uh, issue 14 is going to be about. Um, and so there might be some slight spoilers in this one, but hopefully nothing too big. Um, and yeah, just uh, block off your ears and go la 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 um, <laughs> until you won't know until when because you'll be going la 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 la. Um, but there we go. So issue 14 uh, taking place in Egypt. Um, there's going to be six main mission um, as part of this issue. There's going to be two brand new investigation. Um, uh, it's going to start with an investigation, actually, a fairly simple one, you know, another one that you want people to be too um, stuck on, uh, showing some of your knowledge of, uh, of Egypt. Um, the second investigation is a lot more... Um, it's a bit, it's, it's a bit more advanced. Um, different type of investigation that we've done before. Um, I think it's going to be cool, uh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we promise it'll be great. <laughs> yeah, it's this. I'm this is it. so hard to, I think, not give spoilers away. It really is. It's uh, yeah. That's all the challenge of like we're doing this big preview of upcoming content, but because it's a narrative and it's like story driven yeah. game, it's like yeah. You know, what what can we really talk about? It's like one of the big challenges of these streams. In a lot of the other issues yeah, we've yeah, done, yeah. is it was like boss fights and stuff like yeah. that. It's easier to spoil. This one is like, oh, what can we say? But let's see, um, something that might seem a little bit random. Um, so the story itself is actually inspired by uh, a tale. Um, but of course it's TSW, so uh, we've given it like its, its brand uh, TSW uh, twist. Um, it's going to give some answers about some of the elements that you guys have been wanted wanted answers of at the same time as adding a brand new story. So with this issue, it's not something we, we're not going to uh, further explore the, the main story for a while. Like we still, um, Lilith is, uh, is waiting. Um, but we wanted to go back into the type of issue we've done in issue like five, six and seven, like more again, like really contained uh, full stories that, you know, going to give you a, a nice feeling of satisfaction when you finish them because you're like, okay, you know, I know what this was about and now we're done with this part, as well as learning uh, a lot of information about the, um, the secret world in general. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, I think it'll be cool. Uh, we really had like, you know, like the, the title of Freeborn like in, in mind when um, designing everything, you know, looking at what we did right, you know, in all these issues to try and recapture the, uh, recapture the, the glory. Uh, but there you go. So this is uh, something's gonna happen. I'm not gonna say more about this. So just uh, feel free to speculate. Um, we are also um, let, let's talk about the NPCs we're gonna have. Um, so I, without giving any names, which makes it much more difficult, <laughs> uh, you probably have guessed one of the NPC already from a um, uh, from the one of the previous streams. We give you a smaller. Sound um, uh, snippet, uh, snippet, mm -hmm. snippet. How do you snippet, yes. snippet. Um, so that guy, hopefully, is gonna make. Uh, <laughs> is gonna come. Um, we also gonna have some other guy. Um, Another guy. This nice. is great. This is the Ooh. best stream ever. Like. And then, and then that other guy too, and then and then another guy. Place. It's gonna be and like do yeah. That thing. Oh man! Don't miss it. And they're gonna find out. Amazing. The other thing. Yeah. So cool. 
Um, no, um, so we also use the opportunity to allow you to dwell a little bit more into the past of some NPCs that you may like. Uh, I think you'll like this one. Um, gonna, so this is going to be super spoilery because if you don't recognize who that is, that probably means you haven't played the game, in which case you should play it because it's a good game. <laughs> um, but let's see. Uh, a little bit of a spoiler coming up. Um, this is part of the, some research that you're going to find uh, mm. doing the stuff. And I just, yeah, as I told you, I had a really hard time not spoiling too many things, but this one I wanted to spoil. And Curious. I was 42 minutes into the autopsy of my former lab assistant when he woke up screaming. The filth has remarkable properties. Ooh. Ah. So, I wonder who that was. It was Lara Croft. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Crossover, crazy. Whoa. Um, Please don't sue us. But yeah, it's something like we, we had a great opportunity as part of the story to uh, allow actually to find something about those characters. You'll find out a bit more about that guy um, because he's a fantastic character. Um, there was a lot. There's a lot more about his lore, and I know it's. I can use the word lore when Josh is not here because it doesn't get triggered. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, um, it's. I think it's gonna be pretty exciting to find uh, to find something uh, about that guy. It's actually more part of a side mission. Um, than, than the rest, but it's like, yeah, it's perfect. Uh, what else, what else? Uh, I actually have now a massive spoiler coming up. Um, I have a small um, uh, small part of a cutscene uh, coming up, which I wanted to show you. Um, and actually, before we go, this, I'm, I'm gonna tell you just very briefly how issue 14 starts, because um, you've heard about that first character, and what pretty much happened is the, the player finds out that uh, there's been a series of very strange uh, earthquake um, happening in Egypt. So you go there and you investigate and try to find out uh, what might be causing it. And that's a uh, you know, very simple start. Uh, and that goes into something strange and mysterious. Ooh, strange, world. strange things afoot oh, yeah. in the sandy wastes. And so, as part of your as part of your research, you're gonna you're gonna stumble about uh, across some uh, old characters, and this is a uh, a small video that will tell you more. And if you don't wanna look at it, you have about thirty seconds of la 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 before you can uh, gaze. before you can come back to the stream. <laughs> and here goes now. Thunder and flashes like lightning, but is neither. Make them stop. I'm scared. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know where we still muted. Yep. Awesome. No, we're not. Cool. Oh, I, I was talking about I, I was talking oh, about awkward silence, so it's kind of um, um, it's perfect. So there you go. Um, this is a very small part of a, a cutscene that you're gonna see. Uh, you'll find out more um, in the story, and hopefully that gets you excited to find out more about it because it's cool. And I was very glad to uh, get to reuse uh, voice NPCs. Um, what else? What else do we have to talk about the story? We actually so we talked about the location, we talked about the NPCs, we talked about the story itself, we talked about the new instances. What else have we done that's new? We've added a new monster to the game because it's Egypt. Because we love the mummy. Didn't because I love the mummy too much. Because I rewatched the mummy to um, not that we're using any mummies. No spoiler there. Um, who would use mummies in Egypt? I mean, come on, it's it's too obvious. Um, but yeah, there was a, a monster that I feel like we, we cruelly lacked, and hopefully by now you guys have gotten all the clues and you guessed it. Um, but we lacked. And also I gave a massive tantrum until, until the team was like, okay, fine, we'll do it. <laughs> uh, fine, jeez. <laughs> 
But this is the new monster, and they're adorable and scary. Scary. They have a strange definition of adorable. <laughs> they scary, yeah. So there you go. Evil. We got yeah, we got a, a new cool uh, um, tiny little scarabs, and uh, Mr. Art Director here is going to tell us more about the process of making the scarabs because he made them. Well, yeah, this well, isn't like, uh, this isn't uh, actual size either, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, there's no there's no reference, so it's uh, yeah. So there we go. So um, so this is what we ended up with uh, on the scarabs, and let's talk a little bit more about what we did. So starting with a concept, and this one, this concept of that monster is really realistic. Yeah, uh, I did these all in about an hour. Uh, oh wow! Uh, <laughs> um, on in MS, MS Paint. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Are you good in Paint? Like, actually, uh, I actually have pixel by else. pixel. Oh, pixel. Oh wow! Pixel oh, okay, by cool. pixel. He's good. That's why, you know, see the type of people we have working on our team. It's uh, yeah. best of the best. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So these were um, heavily inspired by dung beetles, right? Mm. Uh, the best type of beetles. Yeah. Um, so I did lots of research, read all Wikipedia had to offer. <laughs> um, Dissected them, etc. Yeah. We have beetles everywhere in the office. It's horrible. If you guys know how to get rid of them, it's... Uh, yeah, I brought my collection in. <laughs> oh, on the note of eradicating beetles also, people are asking, will there be a 10,000 kill achievement for beetles? Like, will they have their own new, like, monster category? <laughs> <laughs> Not right now, but that's a good idea. We might make a cool. kill, a, kill, a, kill a million beetles, just uh, because, you know, it was asked on the stream first. Um, they, um, I think people would want to killed me and probably would find out where I live and actually kill me if we were to put that achievement in because they not many of them I didn't want to become like you know all new monster overwhelming they used as a very specific part of, a, of the story that really made sense mm -hmm. um, so yeah actually I hadn't really considered the achievement I can uh, have a look at it to see what would make sense thanks suggestions I like it like one million right? yeah I think a million is good just to start with yeah. like on the first one and then go from there all right, so you got those concepts. So based on this, this is what you did. Uh, and so what happened? Yeah, I went backwards. Um, <laughs> I didn't like that direction, so I just scrapped it. Okay. But uh, what, what I usually do is I start with, um, I guess this is the, the rig. Um, I, I got to make sure, since we, we do end up reusing uh, rigs, we, we have a few rigs that we, we put a lot of so what's monsters the rig on. For people oh, uh, that's probably a very yeah. important point. But um, I guess the rig is the um, skeleton of all the monsters that drives all the animation. All the animations. You don't animate the the mesh itself. You you animate simpler objects that live inside of the the game mesh that are invisible in game. You animate those, and those sort of drive mm -hmm. the rest of the body. It's just like a real human. You know, it's the skeleton, yeah, it's yeah, the best exactly. way. And then you just put different skins on top of it, and yeah. this is how you can make very different looking monsters, uh, but I still use the same kind of animation system. Yeah, and this is very common, all games do this. They usually have a few rigs in that all, most all of their monsters are made off of. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I bring this in, and because I, you have to make sure that the mesh, the game mesh fits perfectly on top of it, um, or else it doesn't work. So I always start with this to make sure that it's accurate. Mm -hmm. um, Anyone uh, and then I start basically smudging Play-Doh around over top of it. Um, and I'm always looking at the, the reference just uh, to try to get something close within our limits. Yep. So, reference? Yeah, that's usually on my other monitor. Um, and then, not bad, you can see the head shape already. It's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, uh, and just keep going. I'm pushing around and sharpening up the details. and. Uh, I'm trying to get sort of close to a dung beetle, but I want to make it my own. You know, I'm not just going to have a, you know, exact copy yeah, of a, of a dung monster, beetle. Monster beetles. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think I end up deciding to add horns to things. Is that the? Yeah. yeah. I give it big old tusks. Um, I'm just, I'm, I sort of work all over the monster at once. I don't really like finish one area and then move, on, you know, move on to another. I, I'm kind of all over the place. Um, adding more horns. I think I scaled down the. The tusks a little bit; those are a little extreme. Yeah. And, um, I need some micro detail to its shell from years of yeah. years of use, I guess. So that's nice. So that's pretty much. Are precious. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. We're, they're 
poach them for the on the black market. Oh. Yeah. So that's a sculpt uh, finished here. We have, and then so we go into that monster. So yeah, so that's high res. So that's like. So this is know. the final product, green, and yeah. uh, and then this is usually when I go out. Like I think it's a little bit too green, yeah. and then we should do something else. Yeah, I try to so get away with the bare minimum, and then yeah. until someone catches it. Um, <laughs> So what is this? Uh, so the, the the that sculpt that you saw, it, it's way too high res to fit in the game. So uh, you have to take that and then make a low res version with a lot less geometry um, for for the game, and you try to just trace on top of it the geometry. Mm. Um, and that's what this is. Um, I always work in green because it's the best color. Mm. And you have all the dragons in the stream was like, yay! Yeah. <laughs> it's actually a scary Favoritism! Yeah. <laughs> um, and then you get this? Yeah, so then that what that high-res sculpt is for is your... your uh, uh, I'm trying to find the right words. Uh, it's called baking, but you take, you take that detail and you put it into a texture, mm -hmm. um, which is applied to your game mesh, and it, it, it really fakes. It fakes a lot of the lighting, it fakes a lot of the detail, so... You can get that look with being much cheaper exactly. in the engine. So pretty much, it's like it's like you're doing, you're using this mesh, and then you're faking everything to make it look like this one. Yep. And then you end up with this, which is, as you can see, it's like pretty close to what we had. But um, for what matters to us, is like this: this less polygons, and then it makes us happy because it makes it more optimized. So afterwards. Next step is you do those things, which, where's this scarab gone, man? Yeah, so this, it looks like nothing like what the colors are going to be in-game. Um, so, what, what's, what is it? Uh, this is uh, a texture um, okay. for it, and it's how we um, make variations to the monsters. Uh, it's a tint mask, and it's really kind of complex, but basically uh, each color in that texture translates to a different color that I can change in game, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, each channel of the texture R, G, and B can be ripped out and we can adjust the colors of the monster that way. Uh, and there's another example, um, which you can s might be able to make out some of the... You can get some of the ridges and yeah, details. Yeah, like, yeah, the, yeah, like the, the legs and, and stuff that, like yeah. that. So it's um, this is not at all what the final texture looks like. This is really just like a helper mm -hmm. texture that um, instead of creating a new texture for every single variation, every like red one, green one, black mm -hmm. one, which I think are the ones we have. Yep. But um, we just create one map and then th that drives all of the other colors. So it's, it's way cheaper. It's another optimization. Yeah, thing. it prevents us from making like, you know, a brand new texture every single time we want to do a small change on, a, on the monster. And, you know, it gives us more for, uh, for the same price. Yep, absolutely. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a smart way of doing things and it's very common in the industry. Again, we're giving away uh, industry secrets right oh, here. It's no, like, you can know. be a game developer. Magicians, <laughs> yeah. Magician skill is going to come after us now. <laughs> um, I'm actually, we had wanted to talk a little bit about the animation system as well. Uh, I'm looking to see if it's one of the... Um, I don't see the, the oh, scorpion darn. one. Do uh, you have a let's see, uh, so the reference uh, slide right at the very top there should have the scorpion, I believe. Aha, yeah. uh -huh, okay. So, you may not have guessed this, but uh, scorpion and scarabs are the exact same creature, the exact same insect. Oh, yeah, I knew that. Yeah, so like, if you just take a I tail studied, off yeah. and the claws off, they're the same insect. They actually, yeah. They're, they're <laughs> true. Don't ask... Any biologist, <laughs> trust us, we game developers. Um, <laughs> so the scorpion ended up being really close to what a scarab would be. I mean, they're both insect-like. And um, so uh, what I ended up doing is chopping off the tail and chopping off the claws. And we're able to reuse a lot of the scorpion, um, which again is another optimization uh, thing. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, but you might, I mean, I don't think you'd ever notice. Um, and, and it's, it's really interesting when you're behind the scenes to see like, you know, yeah. what, what, what's, uh, 
what secret monster is this actually yeah <laughs> no it's a, a yeah it's it's uh, i was playing to some friend the other day like it's very interesting like in a lot of games you know if you use if you if you use to you can see in every game that you play oh you know this is like you know this this bear is the exact same monster as this you know as giant monster thing yeah and you can recognize because you you can recognize the skeleton behind it but you know the job of uh um of um, character artists and everything is to be clever and to try and see how they can uh, make new monsters out of existing skeletons. So yeah, this guy like you know we have two insectoid uh, monsters like you know with a, a way of walking that can be reused and then of course you know on top of it you add extra animations to give them this individuality. But on the on the uh, on the rig it was like this is perfect. We can make a skeleton using using that scorpion like you know even though the scorpions have eight legs and scarabs only have. Uh, six so you only like you know you pull out two legs and then it's done you just press out the pull out leg button mm -hmm. and it works <laughs> mm -hmm. and smooth. so let's see we have like so now we have all this um what can i have a look at actually the actual yeah. um like the full motion? textured version and okay. then we'll show the okay. version okay. in motion um because i just realized actually it's me i messed up and there was two more slides i i missed earlier because i didn't see the slide earlier yeah i guess going back to the the tint mask this is what those strange colors are applied and and even though it's still on white, this is really just to give me an idea of where yeah. the color variation is going to go. And uh, and then you can add the full. Yeah, and so you can see the areas that were like blue, green, and red before have changed to more like natural beetle colors. Yeah, you get these kind of nice like uh, shimmering effects and stuff. It's, so uh, without that tint mask, it would just be like a solid black. Yeah. You know, without the color variation. So. So there you go. And then just for your pleasure, and because we're nice people, we're actually going to show you, we made like, uh, you know, because we can reuse the skeleton as much as we want. Uh, having it fight, um, skeletons use their tails, they use their uh, big um, pincer thing, and then the scarabs don't have any of this, so it makes animation very weird. So this is when we need to then uh, gently poke the animators and say, oh, come on, please, could you make something? And then, so this is what they've done um, for our little charming skeleton. And this is him in game. <laughs> and what is he going to do? Whoop! Crotch shot! Because <laughs> <laughs> this is what scarabs do. They mean and they aim for the. Uh... Actually, no, that's a huge <laughs> beetle, too. Like, I think it's terrifying looking. It's a big beetle. Yeah. And then a poor thing, and there you go. Aww. No, you feel bad. I do. So but there'll, there'll be more. Um, so there you go. So new monsters as part of this. Uh, you're going to find them in uh, dirty corners. And um, yeah. who knows where they're going to come from in the darkness of the catacombs. Ooh. Scary. Um, yeah. So that was one of the exciting things to say about awesome. this. So real quick also, before we move on to the next spot, yes. this is our little halfway point for this preview stream, I uh, wanted to do a little giveaway of bonus points. Uh, if this is your first time tuning in to the stream, uh, if, if it is, welcome. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a raffle in chat, you're going to type a command, run it for a little while, and then at the very end of that, someone will be the winner, and then I will grant you bonus points. Beginning ooh, in a moment. Mm. Now. Okay. Beginning now. We should really have a sound for it, like a wheel turning or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what we should have in the background, like the Mad Max beep wheel. Boop, boop. Yeah. In turn. Beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, pop, pop. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to stop now. It's too late. Happy it's... Friday! <laughs> oh, it's recording now. <laughs> I expect a, a GIF out of this very soon. It's going to be great. Now, I don't have my Lucha mask this time. Uh, <laughs> I'm so I'm sure you're so disappointed. Most people no secrets, so uh. <laughs> Well there you go. So six hundred points. Um, <laughs> there will be another giveaway at the at the end of the stream where actually we'll be giving out a collector's edition of issue fourteen. And I will tell you what's in the collector's edition. So you'll know what you're getting. Oh bam. Oh yeah. Just gonna <laughs> People are typing lucha instead of raffle. <laughs> um, I one person. So while this is running, actually, there's one person. One question that popped out that was interesting. I don't know if this is something that we're able to talk about right now, but uh, are there plans for the implementation or usage of Aegis uh, in issue 14 um, encounters? No. No. Okay. 
No, it's um, so it's a part of the stuff I mentioned before. Like um, Aegis is uh, story-wise is something which is bound to Caden. Uh, might be reused in other locations in the future, um, but for the old locations right now, it has no uh, no space in this. So all of issue fourteen is uh, is Aegis free. Um, Difficulty-wise, it's just a normal QL10 um, type of difficulties, but we've done some uh, we've done a, a few interesting things to make sure that. Um, the issue is not too easy uh, and not too difficult uh, to everyone, uh, particularly when it comes to the to the boss fight. There's um, there's a little surprise there for uh, for everyone, and so there are people who are about to reach our QL uh, eleven. Don't go and just you know one shot the boss and go like, where's the boss? What happened? Yeah. Where'd it go? Yeah. <laughs> but it's. Um, it will all make sense, but it would be too uh, too spoilery to say more. So, uh, but yeah, no edges. Cool, good to know. Okay, and we have a winner for our raffle. Uh, people in chat uh, can already see it, but congrats to D Clouds on your win of six hundred bonus points. Uh, if you congrats. can, yeah, if you can PM me uh, the the Funcom username on Twitch uh, with your in-game character name, then I can find your account, and then I can go ahead and add the bonus points to your account. So congrats, thank you. And don't forget to uh, do it, because we always have uh, people who then don't PM us, and then we're like, well, we don't really know who you are. I don't know um, who you are. Like, you know, please don't give us your account name. Like, don't don't say that in public, because that's your private info, and I mean... Yeah, I guess you can't do much with the account name, but... Right. Well, you know, for privacy's sake. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it depends on like what you do, but just for your own... But don't do it, just PM him. I'm, I'm old OG customer service. He's tr trustworthy-ish. <laughs> um... All right, but I think that's about everything spoilery uh, I wanted to talk about in issue 14. I hope I covered everything. If you have any question, um, then you have questions, and then <laughs> you'll, they'll be answered when issue 14 is released. <laughs> Uh, no, That's let us know if there's anything uh, mm -hmm. that I may have said I would say and I haven't. Uh, but I think I've said everything. I think I, I spoiled it enough now. That's the definition of a teaser, right? Yeah. yeah. Instead of having questions. That's, you know? that's, that's what I do. It's, I wrote the definition <laughs> of teasing. Um, I'm sorry. It's Friday. It's been a long week and I'm going a little bit loopy. Uh, but we're going to move on quickly before I go completely insane. <laughs> and we're going to move on to the feature side. Yes. Sweet. So new features in uh, issue 14, as always, there's, um, uh, as part of the issue, so you're going to have all the stories. There's a couple more stuff that are going to be coming in there. And the first one is something that is called Anima Deviation, which probably means nothing to everyone. And you're like, we've never heard of this. Where is this coming from? Um, so Anima Deviation is a system I've been hinting at um, a while back. Um, actually, because this is like a system-oriented thing, like um, uh, uh, Andrew was supposed to uh, to be in on a on the stream today, but he wasn't feeling too well, and I uh, didn't want him to uh, um, to be unwell uh, in front of you guys. So uh, we gave him uh, some rest, Aww. and then I will try to explain this, but um, I don't have his uh, his is ways, but bear with me. Uh, no, so the anima deviation, we, uh, we mentioned this before uh, when we were doing the skill wheel revamps. Um, when we started, you know, trying to make the elite abilities a bit more interesting, uh, and we wanted to make sure in particular like elite, ability, elite abilities were more interesting to be used um, in uh, dungeons and raids. So um, we had, we, had, we added a new system, um, which is gonna, uh, transform certain abil certain elite abilities based on the boss, and this is not. It's just me having problem with speaking English, not problem with speaking systems right now. <laughs> um, but um, bosses in the game, so bosses you're going to find uh, in dungeons and uh, in raids uh, will have a buff um, which is called anima deviation. And what it means is the anima uh, used in your abilities, you know, when you use your big elite abilities, is going to be um, converted into some um, something new. And in this case, it's actually going to be uh, converted into new damage. But what is converted um, is going to be the CC abilities of um, of those abilities. 
Um, so it's not going to affect every single ability. Um, you will be able to look uh, in the skill wheel and you're going to see certain abilities um, will get um, this message. If you look at point blank, for example, you will see that this is susceptible to anima deviation. What it means, um, and you, uh, you know, if you look at anima deviation, you'll get this definition. It's going to be easier. It means that bosses in dungeons and raids are capable of an anima deviation, which causes certain abilities to no longer apply the crowd control effect and instead deal additional physical damage. Um, so it's not all of the uh, elite abilities who have um, CC effects. Uh, it's really only the elite abilities who are intended to be used for damage. So we're not going to affect like uh, tanking abilities. Um, you know, if you're a tank, it needs those CC obviously to be able to uh, interrupt certain abilities. It's still going to be your main, your primary role. But as a DPS, you're going to be able to use other abilities uh, and stop using um, bombardment um, all over the place. You're going to finally get, you know, go back and be able to use uh, new builds for for dungeoning and raiding. Um, you know, and again, like you know, for the people who still use do or die, uh, you know, in areas where you don't need uh, for bosses where you don't need that much movement, where you're okay to do like that extra damage for the few seconds. Uh, but it just gives you, based on the boss, you're going to be able to start using the skill wheel in its. Um, with its full power without having to worry that um, you're causing the monsters to become immune to, uh, to crowd control because uh, your elite was doing this all the time. Uh, so that's one of the new features. I hope it makes sense to, uh, to everyone and I hope you're excited about the change and yeah. you're going to uh, be awesome. using new, yeah. uh, new builds. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. People in chat are going super nuts about this. Like, yeah, people are pumped. Good. <laughs> Excellent. People are like, bombardment, no! <laughs> <laughs> We know. Um, <laughs> all right, what else uh, do we have? We have the teleport window. So what is this? Um, so there's been some feedback um, recently that, uh, you know, like uh, as part of the new membership update, we've added a, uh, another anima conduit. Uh, it's more things to use in inventory. Uh, we also had the, um, and I always forget the name because it's one of Josh's crazy names who, the type of English I don't speak. Um, uh, the teleporter that you get that teleport you to the Manticore Plaza, for example, in, in Caden, or the Lorien Fabricator, I think. Um, really and funky the names. Yeah. Teleport items. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So those teleport yeah. items. So you know, they they starting stacking up in inventories, and we know you guys like inventory space. So we made a new window. Um, so now when you want to teleport, uh, you're going to be able to go to the teleport window, who looks like this. This is actually an actual screenshot uh, in game. And this is going to list the teleport that you have. Um, the way it's going to work is with the items that you have right now, you just, the first time you click them, it's going to unlock them as part of his new UI. Um, and then when you get new items, you're going to be able to um, unlock them as well. So the idea is something to be used, you know, uh, in addition to Agatha, like, you know, we don't want to make Agatha obsolete, but it's going to, um, we're going to add little by little, like, you know, achievements and ways of getting, um, uh, new teleporters, you know, you know, you have some already. Uh, there's an achievement to get one for the Orochi Tower Lobby. There was the the Manticore Plaza thing was a collector's edition item. Um, you have the Agatha conduit that you get by default. Um, but you're going to be able to get more and more of these items, and then just quickly teleport across the game. Each of them has their own cooldown the way they do, so you can see the the way it is. Uh, if you don't have the achievements, it will give you an indication of the achievement. If you don't have the teleport, it'll give you indication on how to actually get it. Um, and yeah, I uh, hope you guys are excited about this. It's going to be like easy to use. It's going to give you uh, more space into your inventory. Um, Sweet. And that's it with that feature. Yeah. So hopefully you guys like it. And then moving on, and the last one, and it's something I'm way too childish about. <laughs> um, but we got jump pads. Um, <laughs> jump pads? As a designer, oh. it's awesome. <laughs> Um, it's something that we've been like, it's been in the pipeline for, um, for some time. We've been like, you know, doing tests with it like uh, some time back. Um, and really for this issue, like I had a particular idea for a puzzle and I was like, oh, it would be awesome to get the jump pad. So sort of went back and dusted off some, um, some old codes looking at it. And then we finished it up, got, uh, you know, new animations and everything. And so now we actually have jump pads in the game, which is like, going to be awesome for the future because we can use them for tons of very cool stuff. Um, if you're not familiar with uh, jump pads, like, you know, it's something which is actually usually 
quite common in a lot of uh, FPSs. Uh, it's just like a, a pad on the ground, and when you step on it, it will uh, fling you in the air and then make you land um, somewhere else. Um, so these are going to be used uh, in issue 14 at a couple of occasions, uh, and then um, I expect to use them more in the future. Like just because now we have that that systems, um, it's it's fun. But maybe I'm the only one. I can't see the reaction of people, and I'm like, but I get <laughs> out. Like, huh? I know. Right, cool. I was like, <laughs> I have no idea what that is. Like, it makes no sense at all. Um, but yeah, it's it's exciting. So um, yeah, go like step on the platform, ba ba ba, and then whoosh, you land on something else because that's cool. that's better than using <laughs> English to explain what they are. Uh, so yeah, it'll be cool, and they, they use as one uh, one investigation, so trying people like to understand how those things work, and it's going to be the best way to really figure them out, and it's used for other stuff, and it's awesome, and I'm very excited. Yeah, implementing it is, was really quite complex. <laughs> you know, it seems mm -hmm. like a simple thing that it would, it would be like the same as a jump or something like that, but it, implementing them is really complex. Oh yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. It is because like you know you need to define every single time like the length, you know where you're gonna land, and the animation who plays while they're in the air, and uh, and all this kind of mm -hmm. stuff. It's different. It's not like you know it's where we get in control. Like you step in it, and now we're gonna define where you go on those things, and then give you tools to then further counter this and 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 aim at, at things so it's uh it's very cool and then cool. yeah we got like new animations for it we got like new like nice little uh, uh traces that you leave mm -hmm. behind you and stuff so yeah it's to make you feel like you're flying through the air yeah i mean Sweet. if you're just standing still going through up it, it wouldn't have the same feelings if you're soaring which was what we had in the prototype yeah. you just go in there your character goes steepos <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah which is so really yeah. so yeah it's good i'm excited about this yeah that actually sounds really cool i'm curious to see how that kind of Shakes up. Great. I mean, so so some people are also mentioning about how um, how that might affect like future environment design, like maybe make like you know more verticality and mm -hmm. things. I think that yeah. you know, that has a lot of really cool potential yeah. too. So that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. No, it's um, it's yeah. a new tool for us. So you know, this is like you know the first time we get to play with it because this was one specifically for what we needed. But as every tools, then we can become creative, and then you know it gives us new ways of of doing cool content and everything. So it's. Uh, it's uh it's cool for us as a team and i hope you guys uh enjoy what we've done with so far if you have any ideas uh you know of cool stuff let us know it's always uh, always happy to see uh, uh what you guys would like to see and then um again yeah, we'll do more stuff Sweet. as well so um, um so there was one more question also that i wanted to bring up i don't know uh, i might have i might have missed this during the conversation but uh is the anima deviation thing going to be something that players can toggle or is that just automatically going to be no, it's yeah, it's going to be an effect. So it's okay. an effect on the monsters themselves. So in all normal combat, like you know, it, the only thing you'll see on the on the elite ability is like it's uh, it's susceptible to anima deviation. But in normal combat, you will do whatever it does. But when you get to a monster, the monsters will have um, an icon um, that you'll be able to uh, to look at, and the icon just means this this monster. Um, uh, is using anima deviation, so then these abilities will suddenly be uh, uh, be updated. So not all the monsters will use it. It's going to be up to us to see. Uh, you know, on the monster, it's going to be it's going to be particularly like a, a monster design thing. Is this guy using anima deviation or not? Uh, but it's used right now in mostly for the dungeon and for the raids. And then uh, we really make sure, like you know, we looked at the abilities, looked at all the data that we have to make sure everything is used properly. Um, and it's really kind of the intention, like all of these abilities that we know people do not use in dungeons because, you know, they essentially uh, piss off the tanks that you, you're creating the monsters to be uh, to become CC immune. Um, now you're going to be able like, well, you know, now I can use it because it looks cool and it does a lot of damage and now it does even more damage. So it's very, very DPS oriented. Cool. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, I think yeah, I think that covers most of it. Yeah, um, several people were asking, so I just wanted to make sure yep. that yeah, that we could clarify that point. I, I mean, I was curious about exactly mm -hmm. how that would work too. Cool. Um, all right. All I, from there. Yeah, yeah. I think so. We're getting towards the uh, end of the stream. Cool. Um, so we had a little bit more to talk about. I actually, want to talk about the collector's edition, um, since this is what we're about to give away. Um, so what do you get as part of the collector's edition? As usual, there's going to be um, three items. The first one, we talked about the teleport window, but you're actually going to get uh, teleport to um, uh, a spot in City of the Sun God, uh, which is going to be a nice little shortcut for uh, some of the mission repeats you might want to do, particularly the uh, you know the end mission are going to give 
special rewards uh, as again like you know the in in the the optic of what we've done with um, issue like five six seven etc is going to be a, a new way of getting signets um, new um, customizable um, purple um, pieces etc so um, missions are going to repeat uh, and then you're going to get teleport like it's going to conveniently get you quickly uh, towards where those missions might be I don't know I don't know <laughs> Um, also, you're going to be able to get one of those um, cute, tiny little scarab pets um, as a pet. And they're cute. And they follow you around. And they do scaraby things. Uh, and the last thing is um, the big outfit. So, this is now the big set that we do. So, as usual, um, we made a new outfit. This is the looks of the um, like the concept for the, uh, the, the male outfit. This is the female version. A little bit revealing, but they uh, it's culturally they look very nice. Culturally appropriate. It's culturally appropriate. <laughs> exactly. Um, and we actually have a uh, a picture of a work in progress version of the of the female character, and this is what it looks like right now. This is actually something that you're working on, right? Yeah, yeah. In between uh, everything else, uh, <laughs> slowly slowly chipping away at this. Um, Fresh, hot out of the oven. Yeah. Today. <laughs> so what do you have? Uh, what do you have left? Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna do her bracelets and probably the headpiece in the shoes. Uh, I think I, I have some of the shoes already started. Um, but uh, but yeah. It's cool. No, it looks it looks really nice. <laughs> so there you go. So this is like you know this is part of the stuff that we're working on right now. So yeah, as Nick said, uh, fresh out of the oven, you know exactly where we're at. So we still have you know a little bit of work to do, um, but the issue is coming out. It's coming along really really nice. Um, we um, so actually I wanted to announce, but there's going to be um, uh, there's, there's been a delay. Sadly, uh, we wanted to um, we're just about ready to put uh, some of the missions at least on test live as usual like uh, even though they're actually um, finished and, and really awesome uh, i don't want to put like the the last missions on test live because i really don't want to spoil uh, the ending and it's um like it ends with a really epic boss fight uh, it's probably one of the cooler boss fight that we've ever done um uh, but yeah i don't want to spoil it so hopefully <laughs> it, won't, it, won't, it won't break Today's um, theme. but yeah uh, but the other missions that we wanted to put on right now, like uh, our QA department just uh, came out with an, with an issue with them that um, I'd rather we fix it before. Uh, so we'll actually will have them uh, ready on test live either Monday or Tuesday. And I hope you guys can uh, go and have a look at them and we'll put them like uh, one at a time so we make sure we have like uh, um, feedback um, in order, like focused on, on a few things at a time. Um, so we'll probably put like a couple of missions uh, next week and then the next one um, later in the week or but yeah it's uh, we're getting at this stage where we're ready to uh, to start showing a bit more and then uh, looking at releasing the the game uh, the issue um, and I don't have a definitive date right now but it will be coming out uh, in March Ooh. Yes, and it is not that close. It but is we March. Are, it is it's March, March now. We're getting, uh, so it's coming out this month. Yeah, it's coming out this yeah. month. Yeah, yeah. It's it's also also March. I know that in the oh, completely. Uh, happy yeah. March birthday? Yep. March baby? Yep. All through March is my entire birthday. Wow. Wow. My <laughs> mom was in labor for a really <laughs> long time. Hey. <laughs> well, you're a big man, so it's. Uh, <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Great. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I guess that wraps up most of it. Um, can't think of much we'll have a little else. gift, parting gift, but we'll, um, yeah, we'll yeah, do yeah. as usual. Yeah, um, we'll be doing that last little giveaway in a sec. I'm trying to think of anything off the top of my head, like little last little bits. Um, there was one. There was one, uh, was one question about the um, CE uniform, mm -hmm. uh, the new costumes. Mm -hmm. uh, are there plan? Is there going to be a piece? Like a pieced together outfit, or is it going to all be a uniform? Right. No, it's all going to be separate pieces. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Great. So there you go. Yeah. So it'll be multiple yeah. pieces at once. Yeah. Right, cool. Cool. We yeah. tried in general, like it's. Uh, we always try to make them cut pieces. Uh, we know you guys are not super fan of the the uniform uh, thing, so we make sure, like you know, if we are going to do a uniform, um, it'll be designed to be something that really flows all over and something that grabs everything. Um, when you can see, we can go back on, uh, yeah. on the concepts quickly. Usually we try as much as possible um, to concept things as 
as different pieces. So we very like defined pants, defined uh, shoes, as you can see, and it makes it a lot easier then for us uh, to uh, to cut them appropriately and then give you the opportunities to mix and match as you guys see fit. Because yeah, sometimes the concept's just too cool. Yeah. <laughs> and we have to make it as one piece, so. Great. So there we go. I okay. think that's uh, about us done yeah. for, uh, for this time around. That's um, a solid, solid preview. Gonna start up that final giveaway for a collector's edition of issue number 14. So I'm just gonna get this started up in just a second there. Ooh, reset. Open. Good luck. There we go. Um, if Chad has any other questions that they want to throw at us real quick um, while this raffle's running, uh, raffle should be going on right now. Um, yeah, just ask away. Uh, we'll do a quick little Q&A during this time, uh, or we'll, I'll just kind of do this whole thing, and you're just going to stare just watch, at me and nod. Yeah, yeah it'll, be, it'll be really solid. I'm, just gonna... I'm not doing anything. I know, I know what they would do if I do anything. I'm more stupider right now. than He's usual. Not reacting to me. No. <laughs> just, just gonna sit back, you know, no problem. Not no my problem. problem. Yeah, well, you know. If only I had my <laughs> new mask, alas. Um, well, here, here's a topic, maybe, um, I don't know how much we can really talk about this right now, but uh, is uh, do we have any information about any planned upcoming, uh, or, you know, planned upcoming changes to Fusang projects? Or anything that we can talk about regarding uh, just like what we have planned for that in the future? Um, there are plans. Um, we have some designs uh, written to uh, to improve the signs or something that we had in the pipeline since the original changes. Um, we just need to find the right time uh, to do it. Uh, right now we have the entire team focused on finishing issue 14, so getting that story because we haven't done, uh, you know, like that kind of uh, in-depth story content in some time. Um, and yeah, we'll um, we'll get back to it like as soon as we get uh, an opportunity, and then the the changes are really meant to kind of uh, um, fix. Um, how can I how can I explain this? Um, like the changes that we made to make free songs work for the challenges were necessary because we wanted it to be part of the challenges. Uh, but we don't want to lose the point of free song, like the point of having, uh, like the actual ultimate goals of uh, like capturing the nodes and not just doing your mission like selfishly and having still people working together uh, or against each other to uh, uh, to play. So we wanna we wanna recapture this. Like I have. The design has been written uh, for quite some time now on, on what we need to do, but it's fairly ambitious and needs a lot of people to work on it. And uh, yeah, we just need to find uh, the right moment to uh, to get this. And I'm excited because, you know, so I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, well, um, cool. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to get back to it. Sweet. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, thanks for the answer. I appreciate that. Thanks for thanks for asking the questions. Okay, gonna wrap up this poll. Also, sorry for uh, one of the folks that got. Uh, <laughs> blacklisted in chat because you used too many ellipses so I allowed you and you're entered in the chat now so should be good best of luck to you um, let's go and close this out and draw all right so um, I'm sure all of you were really hoping that I would say the word Satan tits on stream here I am already uh, the winner is not Satan tits uh, it was bloody I hope I'm pronouncing this right bloody tear or bloody tear I'm not sure which one but you are the proud owner of issue number 14 collector's edition when it drops. It's um, a bloody tear. The other one is. Bloody tear, bloody That's tear. That's almost worse. Than yeah, yeah. Than I look over bloody tear. I prefer bloody tear over bloody tear, actually. Yeah, I mean, it's just. That's awful. Bloody tear is gross, man. <laughs> the other one isn't? Yeah, bloody tear is. Bloody tear. I don't know. Whatever. Okay, fine. You're fine, weird. Geez. Fine. Gosh. <laughs> uh, Congratulations, bloody something. Uh, you got yeah, the collector's edition of. Um, of issue 14, um, so obviously uh, you won't get it today, we'll wait for it to be released first because else it will be way too good a price uh, and you also would get content that's not quite finished yet. <laughs> um, but as soon as it's finished, um, you'll get your collector's edition which then include again uh, the Scarab Pet, uh, the new teleport to um, Egypt and um, a great fancy outfit. Sweet. Belly dancer. Belly dancer outfit. The guy doesn't look very badly dancer. No. Really, so. no. <laughs> but there's some inspiration there that the might, uh, you know, give you a little <laughs> yeah. bit of an idea of what we're doing. There's, a, there's been a theme throughout this um, throughout this stream. So there we go. I think that's uh, us done for this stream. Uh, we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Um, we actually, I don't know quite yet what we're going to do. If we 
um, depending on where we at, it might actually be a little bit more about issue 14, or we might actually do uh, the final uh, in the series of the the faction stories with uh, Josh Ditch, our lead writer, where we'll be talking about the Templars. So Sweet. don't miss that, whichever it is. Um, and then we're going to leave you with an exclusive, and we'll show you the cover of issue 14. Mm. For any artwork. See you next time. See you guys. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye bye.